Hey everybody, welcome to episode 31. <laughs> yeah, it's gone, my beard. I shaved my beard off over the hot... Well, actually not over the holidays, but I just shaved it off yesterday, I think. Um, it's kind of getting sick of it. Uh, you know, I kinda, you kind of... Your identity... Sir, for a man, your identity is kind of in your beard, but... It's kind of getting sick of it. Kind of sick of, uh, you know, having to wash it after I eat uh, my eggs over medium and have my eggs over medium run down my beard, so... Uh, you know, and getting hairs in my mouth and all that other other business. So I kind of figured, hey, it's time for, now that I'm going into the winter, it's a good time to make my face cold. <laughs> so uh, I did that. Uh, I, I still have the hair, the long hair. I, it's, I just got an apply. It's kind of, uh, it's, I need to wash my hair so it's it's not really presentable at the moment. So I'm not going to, uh, I just threw the hat on. Plus my, but my, 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 whatever it is, rosacea, I don't know if, know if it's rosacea, whatever I have on my forehead, these like sores, um, they had gone down because I was eating healthier and, you know, eliminating some things that I thought were root cause and it started to go down a bit and then, uh, and I thought, great, going into the holiday, you know, going into the holiday, I thought, great, it's, it's gone away. Um. It was pretty chaotic during the holidays, I'm not going to get into that, you know, it's kind of private business, but. Um, there were some situations and stuff that happened over the holidays that uh, I don't know. Maybe it was just the stress. Uh, maybe it was just some of the stuff that I was eating when I was on the holiday. I tried to try to follow my diet as close as possible, but um, I had uh, you know I start scratching again, and then boom, suddenly I've blown open my forehead again. So uh, so that's why I threw the hat on just to kind of plus my hair is kind of dingy look and I know you've seen it dingy before but it's gonna make it uh, make it a little cover it up a little bit but anyways um, I put some thought over the holiday and I was gonna do a video on my orange amplifier which I did get from Santa Claus it is sitting down there um, and then I got some my son got me a really cool uh, vintage tube pedal uh, overdrive pedal like an overdrive preamp pedal and I'll get into that probably eventually, but I, I wasn't going to come out strong with it right off the bat out of the holidays. I, I want to monkey with it some more so I have something a little bit more to tell you about it. I love it. I mean, I absolutely love them. Don't get me wrong. And uh, me and my son did some great, uh, we put on a little performance for the family and uh, some great improvis improvisational stuff from him and I, kind of a very, uh, very bluesy kind of... Uh, because my, you know, my sister, she doesn't like distortion, so we kind of put on this like bluesy kind of thing, um, and it was it was pretty pretty nice. We got it recorded it and everything like that. So uh, I'll get into this eventually. I'm gonna kind of put the uh, music stuff on hold for just a little bit because I think I think it's time finally, uh, especially my people who follow me on Deviant and, and my Patreon members and stuff. All the people that follow me uh, and on the artwork I, that I do, I think it's finally time for me to kind of um, address it and talk about it. And I'm not, again, I'm not going to get into the particulars of what I specifically do because it will get me demonetized here on YouTube. So I'm going to talk about it in its most purest sense and try not, and I'll probably have to, I'll, I'll make mentions and stuff, but. I, I'm going to try to skirt around with the type of stories that I'm actually doing, which are very adult in nature. Um, they, they call it not safe for work. Well, it's not safe for YouTube either. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that. Like I said, if you're interested in that stuff, let me know. You know, give me a message. I'll, de I'll definitely, if you're interested, you know, I'll send you in that direction. Send me in my Deviant site. Send you to my uh, Patreon site if you're interested in checking that stuff out. But again, I'm not really going to focus hyper focus on that. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this creating comic books in a uh, in a pretty general sense. I'm gonna everything that I love and do, and and all of the stuff that I I mean everything about it. I'm just gonna we're gonna go to basic uh, comic book action and storytelling. Uh, you know, stuff of the superhero stuff. To kind of convey what I'm talking about, as opposed to um, the kind of action that goes on in my stuff. So, I mean, there's fighting and stuff like that occasionally, but um, it's other it's other other acts of uh, 
people versus people <laughs> in my uh, in my comics. So I'm gonna like I said, I'm gonna talk about this like I'm back in you know I've got the knowledge that I have now, but I'm how I would have approached it back in say junior high. Um, and I'm gonna tell you the books. I'm gonna tell you how I do it. We're gonna go through writing, put putting together. I'm gonna not really necessarily gonna put together a full out script, but I'm gonna show you how I approach script writing doing it the marble way with plotting so much down to the details I'll tell you what font I use when I when I write my scripts um, because it kind of plays into it's it's all my stuff so I mean like I said you can take it or leave it on a lot of the particular things that I do um, this is just the way I do it and uh, you know a lot of people you know who follow my stuff and, and enjoy my comics I think it's time for them to kind of see an in-depth view on how I do it um, I'm not going to give away all of my trade secrets. I'm going to keep some of it to myself. I'll give, I'll keep a little, a little, a little bit of myself. But I'll, I'm basically going to give you the nuts and bolts in the right direction, and you can take, you can follow it in your own path if, if you're into doing comic books, or if you're just curious, you know, you can follow it into however you want to do it. And this also will work for people like my clients and stuff if they're watching. Um, you'll see how I approach script writing. How I approach because most of the time my clients are providing me the script or plot or whatever, and I'll kind of tell you what I use myself and what I kind of expect, you know, when when it comes to you sending me a story idea, you know, on a script and how I work off of it and how I how I do it, so that you know, and then you can kind of it might might even help you in, in your script writing too. I mean, I'm not a, a writer per se; I'm an artist, but obviously I have to write things down to keep things straight so I can do the art and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go through so I'm gonna start with the the basics I, I kind of I covered some of this stuff in the how to draw comics the Marvel way I covered some of it in um, you know the comics uh, my uh, how to how to create and sell comic book uh, comic scripts book which is over there I didn't pull that one out I pulled a other stack of stuff and I'll kind of show you how it again how I do this um, again let me give you a little bit of the background information to kind of set you why I do the things that I do because it's very detrimental to how I do things I said I started collecting comic books as a you know as a collector not as a just getting one or two here from the store you know when I'm with my mom or my dad at the drugstore but this is when I actually am collecting comic books for collecting comic books um, and for me, it started in 1984, uh, and it started with Secret Wars, the original Secret Wars. Um, and again, I've had I had Star Wars comics, I had Micronauts comics, Shogun Warriors comics, GI Joe comics, um, you know, all that stuff. I mean, GI Joe comic number one, I bought right off the shelf. I mean, obviously, things like you saw me talk about, like the Rock and Roll comic, the Marvel Super Specials, the big. Uh, you know, Battlestar Galactica oversized book. I mean, I had all that stuff, but I w it was more just, you know, I wasn't really collecting comic books. And again, I love superheroes. I love watching the Spider-Man cartoon, you know, the old Spider-Man cartoon. And then, of course, even the uh, Spider-Man and Amazing Friends. Um, love the X-Men episode. It's probably my favorite. And, uh, you know, I was, I was watching The Incredible Hulk. I watched all that stuff. Um, so I know my superheroes. I, I collect Mego doll in the 70s, you know, right around the Kiss, when I was doing all the Kiss stuff. I was collecting, before I really got into Star Wars figures when they came out in 78, I was, uh, because of Batman and Robin, because of the Adam West show and the cartoon, Super Friends, that's a big one right there, Super Friends, uh, is I was, I collected the Mego dolls. Um, you know, I had the pocket heroes. I mean, I was pretty ensconced in superheroes at a fairly early age, but the specifically comic books, I wasn't. Um, and like I said, a lot of my I started drawing comic books because of coloring books, you know, or coloring books, color form, anything that had like uh, illustrated work. Those that Marvel superheroes uh, game card game that I had night from 1978, uh, all that stuff, I. Uh, start. I would just copy it, you know. I would just take it, the pictures, whatever. 
Hey, I'm sorry. Why are you? Why are you? I'd start copying it, drawing it on the back of Dino's pizza coupons. I mean, anything, envelopes, anything, I notebook paper, anything I get a hold of. I love manila paper. I loved manila paper. Was it made manila? I always thought it was vanilla paper because it's kind of like, it looks like vanilla, like an off-white. Manila paper. I guess it's made in manila. I guess that's why they call it manila paper, but and manila graph paper. Oh, <laughs> That's hard to get. I'm, oh, that's some good stuff. Some good shit. Is <laughs> that manila graph paper? But anyways, manila paper, I loved it. The teachers always had big reams of it at the front of the classroom, like in a cabinet or like in a little tray, and you could go up and get as much manila paper you wanted. You know, it, I loved it because, you know, you could draw white crayons worked on it. Um, and I loved white crayons. Loved white crayons. Loved white colored pens. Still do. I love white, that look of stark white on an off-white. I love that look. Just the aesthetic of that. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's, you know, I, and I would go through tons of paper and that's how I learned how to draw. Uh, I drew everything I basic, anything that interests me. You know, it's comic, if it was a comic book, I'd draw from a comic book. If it was, most of it was like the comic book covers, but a lot of coloring books. I had a lot of Batman, Spider-Man coloring books, uh, Star Wars coloring books, uh, you name it. I loved coloring books because they essentially were the black and white images. And I'll get to that when I talk about, uh, and I, I've gone over these before, when I talk about the essential guides, um, because essentially, I mean, you're not going to color these, but essentially that's what you're looking at. You're looking at the eight pages um, without color. And I love that with oh, coloring books because you could do one of two things. You could either... You could take the coloring, you could, well, you could color the page, obviously, but you could take the coloring page, and you could lay a piece of paper over it, and trace it, right? Or you could just try to draw it freehand from it by looking at it, and that's usually what I started to do. Because, um, you know, tracing was always frowned upon, uh, you know, it's, oh, you don't want to trace that, you know, don't trace that. Uh, I, I'll get to my tracing uh, philosophy, which there's nothing bottom line is there's nothing wrong with tracing. If you want to trace, go ahead and trace, right? There's a whole long spiel with uh, with Neil Adams getting interviewed by uh, Kevin Smith. Go look it up on YouTube and he'll, uh, Neil Adams, I don't, enough said. I mean, he drops the mic on that. Pretty much he tells you his views on tracing and uh, I pretty much share the exact same views. But also, but I mean, obviously when you're learning how to draw and you're trying to get better and you're learning your chops you're gonna well for me i'm gonna copy things now that could be copying an existing drawing that could be copying what you see i mean obviously you know take an art class draw what you see draw from real life you're, it's the same thing i mean if i take a he-man figure another thing i learned how to draw from was drawing from he-man figures take a he-man figure and uh you know what i mean and you hold them yay you know, and, you, and you're going to draw him. He's like, okay, circles for his arms. And, you know, you start learning all that information and that vocabulary just by looking at a He-Man figure. Uh, just because there's some muscle, you know, you can really see the muscle, muscles and stuff in there. And so that translates obviously well to uh, superhero stuff. And superheroes are muscular. Now, it's also, you know, I'll get on this probably in more detail. But I, me personally, this, and this goes back to the time period. Is I loved essentially uh, the Bronze Age. Um, now, granted, I started collecting comics at the very tail end of the Bronze Age, '84. So '84 is the last year of the Bronze Age. However, my love of comic books, for the most part, because I'd go and get back issues, and a lot of those, like I said, a lot of those those uh, those toy licensed comics were all from the Bronze Age is um, I love the Bronze Age. So I love comics from, say, 1970 up to 1985, which covers all of the 70s. Um, and there's a, there's a few particular things about that time period, especially when it comes to comics and just visual art, graphic art in general, is everything has a very 70s feel to it. You're probably asking yourself, what's the time about? Um, People, the, the way they draw hair, the way they draw outfit, you know, clothing, 
um, they would they just, people would stand. Uh, I mean, a lot of people today draw, you know, that that's what they learned how to draw too. So that, that stuff still exists. But this is, I guess, bottom line is it's way before anime and manga and the Japanese style had to, had, cro had had creeped into how Westerners draw draw. It. They were drawing in the classical sense, and the way they approached drawing superheroes and drawing just people in general, um, you know, and we're talking about figures here. I mean, I, I can talk about drawing buildings, I can talk, and there's there's a degree of that too as well. I can talk about drawing cars, drawing interiors or room settings, because you got you got to draw some of that stuff. There's a ways around of drawing it elaborately. And I think a lot of people get bogged down in that too. I don't. They need to go back and look at the originals because you look in a an older, like a '70s comic, or even even a Silver Age comic, or even a Gold Age comic. I would say anything up to say modern period. You go and look up those comics, and there might be an establishing shot of a building. Let's say it's a brownstone in New York, you know, and Doctor Strange is going into his sanctum seclorum. You know, they're going to show that scene or maybe somebody drives by in a car you know or drops somebody off in a car right but once we get past that once we get past we've established the setting when it comes to individual panels there's not there's a lot of panels that just have no background but it's we still know it takes place in that room um so if he walks into his sanctum seclorum right and he's interacting with somebody and uh you know, and, and the camera is hyper focusing. It's almost like a, a deep focus, or not deep focus, um, like a portrait view, where the figure is what's in focus. The exterior is kind of abstract at that point. So the simplification of that, and Kirby did it well. Obviously, he was a master at it. A lot of those older guys would do is they would just not draw it. They'd make a color, something that doesn't clash with the figures. Something that kind of, it's either a warm color or a cool color. But it's, it basically, they left it blank. And the colorist would come in with a color. And I'll tell you how I how I approach that as well. But, you know, if somebody, they might interact with an object. So if you're, you know, but if you're, you got this big panel where somebody's sitting on a couch, talking on the phone, which, you know, back in the day, they'd be talking on the phone, you know. And, uh, you know, and somebody walks into a room you know, and you can see them walking through the, the threshold or through the doorway, right? You'll draw that, right? But then when you switch to like a close-up of somebody talking to the other person, right? You're going to get a head and shoulder shot. There's no reason to keep drawing that background. Don't even do it. Hyper-focus on the figure in, in that too. If you're drawing like a medium shot, uh, you know, I, again, if, if, if you want, if it's action or something's going on in that panel and you really don't want it to, to, to you know, to uh, clash with the background. The thing is, drawing the background in every single panel just, A, it takes time, very tedious. Remember, a lot of these comic book artists back in the day, they needed to get the shit done quick. So they would just whip the stuff out. And uh, you, you didn't want to sit there and be tediously drawing every single panel, have a background. And that also goes to drawing uh, how you pace your, your, your pages and your panels. You don't want to have, you know, you don't have to draw every single move. It's not, you're not animating here, right? You're cutting from scene to scene. And you might only have two panels in a room where people are even in this room talking. And then maybe they're, maybe they're going to talk, or maybe something else is happening too, right? You're going to cut down to some complete, or, or skip forward in time, or go back in time. There's no reason to just have like three solid, if you're only three solid pages of talking heads in a room, and you're drawing every specific, like, movement, right? Let's say you're drawing six panels on a page, and you're like, this person turns to talk to this person, and this person, maybe they get into a fight, right? And it's just like, that's okay. Three over three, you go over three pages of that specific scene, you're pushing it. And even three pages itself, unless you have a lot of, like I said, you want to keep a lot of those fast moving panels or skip forward a few minutes in time. You don't have to have it X. You know, the camera doesn't have to follow somebody exactly. You know, the person walks into a room, cut, right? 
you know, the next panel, somebody walks into the room, there's somebody there he's going to talk to, right? Cut. Talk. To, the person talks, saying, saying something, some dialogue, right? And then the guy responding, cut, right? You don't have to keep going panel after panel after panel after panel of, you know, just like you're, like almost like it's a, a handheld camera and you're following the action, you know, and it's all in one take. Um, I find that boring. I find a lot of the comics that are, it's like you, you read 20 pages of comic and it's like, you know, nothing really happened. Sure, sure some things were said. Sure, somebody might have, you know, had a, had a little kerfuffle or something. But really, it's just like, I don't want to, and here's the other thing, I don't want to read 20 pages of somebody in a coffee shop talking with their friend, you know, about some subject, and there's no action, there's no, you know, nothing, you know, if they're talking about something, hey, maybe a flashback and show like that scene, some way to break that up, to cut that up, again, I'm kind of jumping into things right off the bat, but I'm going to... This is the type of video, the, I'm going to do a series of these. Um, they'll probably be long videos. I'm already gone 20 minutes into this one. Try to make hour-long videos, and, uh, and hopefully I'll be able to find a good place to kind of cut them. And I'm going to do a few of these over the next few weeks. Now that it's 2024, and, uh, and really get into, you know, how, to, how I do comics. Um, so if you're here for the KISS videos, if you're here for the, you know, whatever, um, you're probably not going to get it, so I might lose some people, which is fine. Uh, I think this inevitably is the type of uh, video, or this is the type of YouTube channel that I really wanted to do all, all along, but kind of like, just kind of, because I didn't know how to approach it without getting heavily into what I do, which again, you know, I'm going to say it again, it's, it's not appropriate for all ages, and it's not appropriate for YouTube. So... Um, but I'm going to, like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take all that knowledge and pour it into how I would have going about doing a regular comic book. And I'm going to use a lot of Marvel examples because, like I said, I was a Marvel kid. I'm mean, sure there's some DC stuff that I love. Love the Super Friends. Love Batman. But for me, when it comes, when it came to really focusing on comics, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Marvel guy. Uh, so I'm going to kind of use them as an example here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you some books. You've probably seen some of these I've showed before. This is the Bible. It's not the best book. And the thing is, don't use this book as like an all all out handbook or guide. This is basically, um, and if you like this specific style in this specific time period, this was written in 1978. And uh, it's written by Stan Lee and John Buscema. Or Busema, how do you say it? Probably my all-time favorite uh, comic book artist, next to John Byrne. Um, but uh, I'm gonna go through here, and I'm gonna show you. Um, sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of follow this stuff because a lot of the stuff I don't use because I work 100% digitally. So in order, so in other words, I'm, I'm gonna skip sections on um, you know traditional drawing material. I don't use it anymore. Um, and really, my honest opinion is, I mean, if you draw that way, that's fine. Um, but I highly suggest, and again, this is just my subjective opinion, I highly suggest you move to one of these guys. This is a Wacom here. Um, move to a drawing tablet uh, and use your computer. In this day and age, a lot of times comics aren't even going to print. None of my comics are in print. All my comics are digital. Um, and that's how I sell them. That's how I do commissions. That's how I, you know, post them, everything. All my, you can print them out, sure. And I was going to try to do some printing out. I, I experimented with stuff. And I have had comics printed before. But by and large, if you want to make this for mass consumption and you want to get your comic book out on the web and, you know, try to find a following... And try to get people interested in your stuff and maybe make some money out of it by monetizing it. Don't even waste time with paper and pen. Um, because it's expensive, it's messy, it takes up space. You're going to keep running out of stuff that you have to keep going back to the store to get. I never run out of paper. I never, my pens never dry up. My pencils never break. 
This is this. As I've had this new Mewcom now for a year, because almost exactly a year, and I'm just starting. Can't probably can't see it. I'm just starting to. I can't see it. Don't focus on it. Just starting to finally wear down my my nib. These nibs last for a very long time, and I got a very heavy hand. Trust me. And uh, I haven't worn down this nib yet very much. Uh, my last Wacom Cintiq, I never I had it for five years, uh, and uh, I never changed the nib once on it. And I've done hundreds of pages with, with that thing, and I never changed. So my, I had an Intuos before that, which is not the Cintiq version, and I, I broke one, just came apart on me. And I used to change the nibs on that more frequently because the surface of that Intuos was different than the surface of these Cintiqs. So if you're not in the know, and maybe I'll do a, another video explaining it, but go on, look on YouTube, look on, uh, go to Wacom itself. There are other sites, there are other companies that make these, but go on there and kind of look around and see what they're all about. Um, I would say most people Colorists especially, all colors are digitally nowadays, they're all using some kind of digital interface, whether it's a Cintiq and Tuos, whatever. Uh, but like I said, I never run out of pens. I never run out of pencils. I never break a pencil. I never run out of ink. I never run out of paper. Um, and every time I need a new page, there's I just make one. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just open a new page new go up there hit file hit new new and I'll pull up a comic book page I have a comic book page template in my uh, clip paint which I'll get to play clip paint as well but yeah I just go in and you know hit new there we go I got a new piece of paper I click on the uh, pencil tool or I click on the pen boom uh, I'm ready to go right and and I have also I pencil digitally and then I ink digitally and I've actually realized it's kind of a waste of time. You can just draw, right? And if you need to erase something, just erase it. You know, if you need to uh, create another layer on top of the other one, like your tracing paper, this is where tracing comes along. Put a piece of tracing paper over it and fix your, your mistakes or whatever you're going to do. Or you're going to transfer a drawing from your sketchbook over to a comic book page. It's all done with layers in the uh, in the art, art applications so um, there really isn't really a need to pencil at this point you know if you're just gonna, if you're really scribbly you know maybe uh, but even then you can just do that on scribble that that drawing out on a layer you know and then boom just and then just re ink it with a nice fresh line and then incorporate that to the you know and merge it all down get your final ink layers uh, there's really no, no reason to do it the way I was doing it. I just how I, in my head I just thought that was the way to do it, and it saved me so much time doing it than doing it without doing those two steps. So I'm just creating what's called line art. That's the black and white line. And to create line art, you don't need the pencil and ink. Obviously, I want to use an ink tool to get a sh sharp, crisp line, but that's my end tool. Or sorry, that that's my main tool. So I can. You know, if, if I need to take some, a draw, take a drawing, or take a face, or take a car, or something that I want to tra trace through into the panel, I can I can set it up, you know, on a layer, and then I can just take the ink and ink and trace that car, or trace that building, or trace that face, trace that whatever I want to, and trace it in and match it to the drawing that I've already got done. And I'll show you how to do that um, and how I do it. But uh, yeah, you know. Basically, it doesn't really matter what your what you, how you're coming up with your panels in your composition. The final line art that you want to produce um, is obviously you want to use the ink tool because you want thick and thins, and you want it to, and you want different line weights. And I'll show you how to do all that. You want it to, um, you know, to uh, it, it, that's what you want. It's your end game, right? Whatever is under, whatever hundreds of layers you got underneath there to get to that point, it do, it's, doesn't really matter. What you want is that final layer. Uh, so again, and and to do that traditionally would be a lot of scrap paper, a lot of you know trace retracing, tracing over. It'd be a lot. It'd be a lot of work. 
Um, and then once you've laid it down onto your comic book board, if you wanted to change that panel, right, you're kind of screwed. You kind of have to, you know, it, it's it's too, and then there's obviously undo is a big deal, being able to undo mistakes, undo things, erase ink without even a, you know, a blink of an eye, you know, being able to select things. That, I mean, there's, I, I could go on forever. There's so many advantages to drawing with a computer than there is to draw traditionally, and uh, I highly suggest you do it. So, if you skip books like this, you know it's it's okay to, for just for your knowledge to know that stuff, but you really don't need any of that stuff. And I don't and I don't have it anymore. So, okay, so there's that. Uh, obviously, the most invaluable thing to probably have is uh, comic books. And the nice thing about Marvel, it's just that time period, is a lot of the comic books are available in Masterworks, or now they have Epic. They have, and now they even have the, their new cheaper. Like these weren't that expensive. This is a, Volume One of Spider-Man's. Uh, I think this this was twenty five bucks. I think you can get the new version of it for fifteen. I think it has the same issues in it. First nine issues. Well, yeah, first nine issues of Spider-Man in it. Um, I think that doesn't have the. Yeah, it does have it. Does have Amazing Fantasy in it, and then it has, uh, one through. Can't even see it. It's got issue one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry, it's missing seven. Why is it missing seven? Eight, nine, ten. Okay, whatever. Regardless, uh. It usually has about, yeah, about 10, 12 issues in one of these. And you, like I said, they're starting to put these out. They're redoing the, reprinting these in paperback form now. They're less expensive. And they're like 15 bucks a piece. And trust me, you don't want to go back and trace, check, unless you're really into comic book collecting for the value. You don't, you don't want to go back and chase down back issues of these comics because they're extremely expensive. And frankly, you know, they, they're, you know, you're going to get the, the newsprint. And you're not going to get, you know, a, a good, clean, crisp uh, version of the panels. And like I said, there's a lot of people that don't like these. They think that they're too oversaturated. They think that they're too whatever, fill in the blank. But from an artist's perspective, and if you're specifically going in wanting to draw comic books, you need to see that clarity. You need to see that high contrast. You want to know you know, what colors work good. I mean, obviously, things like this, I mean, that purple on that gray is pretty harsh, but you want to know that, and that's so you don't make that same mistake. You know, there's certain, you know, doing this heavy dark green for all of, uh, like, these alligators and the lizard, it's, it's too dark, um, and you want to see what that looks like. Now, there's also things you got to worry about with drawing. Now, I have not color calibrated my Cintiq. Um, so my colors, I use the same colors and the same color, the color on my Cintiq looks different than it does on, I have a 4K monitor. This is not 4K, I don't think it is. Maybe it is, but it definitely looks different. It's It's got like, because it's backlit and it's because it's a different screen, you can calibrate them to be the same, but I haven't done that. Because this is the reason why. I use these exact colors. I, I've gone through, you say there, I, I got them, uh, I took a, a, a color guide, right, from all of the Doc Martens colors, because that's what they use in the original comics. And I've got the whole swatch of all the colors, and they're perfect, tr perfect, and just like this, they're perfect uh, versions of them. And I've made a palette off those, I think there's 60 some, 68 colors, I think. Um, and I've took, taken them just to make sure, and I put uh, the C, the CBRs of these comics, I put them on the, uh, the, uh, you know, in my, as a layer, and I've checked them to make sure, and they're pretty much spot on uh, to these exact colors. So, and they all have, and I'll get, I'll show you this too, because this is this is information you want to know. They all have a specific, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, was it magenta, not red necessarily, but they still call it red, red, blue, and and yellow. Yeah. 
uh, values, uh, number values, and to make up that specific color. It's not just for these colors, for any color. But now that I've got those exact colors, and I have a master list where I've written down all of their numbers, so I can, even if I don't have the palette on hand to eye drop, I can just type them in, type in the numbers. I need to some, at some point, it's like learning like Japanese or something, I need to, or learning, you know, your math equations. I need to make a set of index cards with all the colors on them and put the numbers on the back and I need to go through and practice memorizing them because I have to still have to go, what are those numbers again? It's 1, 254 or 196 something and, I have to, and it gets kind of tedious when I have to enter those numbers in, especially when I, if you can't eye drop them into a, a, a computer to a program over here, from a program over here, I better write, I better type them in and I can never remember them. So I gotta pull them up. Sorry, I am crazy. Um, sorry, I worked all morning on, on comics, so I'm uh, pretty beat from doing that. Um, anyways, uh, so yeah, so you want to, uh, and I'll get, uh, this stuff will make more sense as I go. Uh, I'll keep talking about it. We've got 36 minutes. Okay, I'm going to try to make this an hour, this first episode an hour. And this will be just like the an overview, I guess, is what I'll call this. Um, and it will make up a little overview sheet. And I'll show you that. So, again, having comic books is invaluable. Because especially if you want to see how specific artists, if you want to crib a specific artist, or ape them, as I say, you want to ape his style. Um, like this here, these are Ditko pages. And you want to draw just like Ditko. And you want to know how Dr Ditko draws, specifically drew... Dr. Doom in this particular time period, right? You go and you look. And like I said, all that visual information that's there, all of it is shorthand uh, to convey certain things. And I'll get into this too as well. All these different techniques that they use for shorthand to draw specific things. Um, again, I think it's kind of lost. Into, today people want to... A, they don't use the color original color system. They use... Uh, unlimited colors. I find having unlimited colors to be a detriment more so than an advantage or a disadvantage more so than an advantage. The reason why is because it, it gives you too much choice and having, I don't, there's a philosophy about it, too much choice is a bad thing or too much choice equals, it, it results in no choice. I can't remember how that goes exactly, but um, yeah, you know, and having you know, people want to, like, they want to totally draw things, like, specifically exactly how they are, and they don't look like comic books at that point. Now, obviously, if, you ever, if you're developing your own style, you know, do things however you want. Again, this is my subjective opinion. This is how I approach it. This isn't the right way. Like my guitar video, you know, this is the wrong way to play the guitar. I sp approach things a hyper-specific way. And I want to let you know how that is, what that is, so that you know you can either you you know maybe you'll come up with maybe you'll take what I do and go you know I like the the ideas but I like this and this and this and this and this it's like a salad bar you know what I mean you make your own salad but I'm going to show you the salad bar and uh, and you can do whatever you want right but this is how I'm going to make a salad um, anyways so let's go to another some other invaluable stuff and I, I'll show you the originals and I'll show you. Uh, graphic novel version of it. So here is Marvel Universe. I know I did a video on these before. Well, go back and watch that if you want. Um, it's basically a character catalog, uh, but they're by the specific artists from that specific time period. So when I want to draw Scarlet Witch to look like that, which is a John Byrne drawing, I'm, I'm not gonna, probably not going to draw her specifically, just like John Byrne. If you notice John Byrne, a lot of his faces look the same. A lot of uh, John Buscema's faces look the same. A lot of Jack Kirby's faces look the same. You know, they, they basically they're just drawing an ideally idealized version of whatever person it is. In this case, Scarlet Witch. So an idealized female, you know, of a certain height, you know, and of a certain build, and you know, basically it's just a mannequin at that point. And you know, you can you you know her because of her hair color. Scarlet, obviously, you know the style. You know it because of her her uh, head headgear here. 
you know, because of the way her cape is, you know, her bodysuit, you know, her, she's got like that, uh, the body suit underneath it and then like a leotard on top but she's got these specific gloves specific boots everything you know but essentially it's all on the same a mannequin and I'll, I'll get to that and i'll show you how that's done too uh, how i approach that and there was a, there's an old way of doing it and i obviously just like the, the pen and paper i've thrown out the old way to do it for a new version that's has a lot more advantages to it than the old version um but yeah, so if I want to see how these characters are drawn, I'm going to look in this, uh, you know, or maybe the, but around this time, you know, there's She-Hulk right on the cover. So, so again, one of my favorite, if not my favorite Marvel character. Um, again, I love the ladies. <laughs> and I, I think I've gone over this before, you know, and I, I usually, you know, I, I'm partial to the female characters. You know, I still love my Wolverine, I still love my Colossus, I still like my dudes, right? But when it comes to me drawing and doing my stuff that I do, I obviously focus on the ladies. Um, and uh, and I have so for a very long time. Uh, and these are probably right about the time that started, was getting these specific comics. I'm seeing this drawing of, um, of Marvel Girl and this specific outfit. Uh, that did it for me. It's like, oh, I love that. I, I want to draw just like that. I want, I want, I want to draw those characters. Like I said, it's not to say that you know I didn't like drawing the dudes. I mean, here's a dude I always thought was cool around that time was Mephisto. He's essentially the devil. I mean, he looks so damn cool. You know, in event, you know, and, and I'll throw male va villains in once in a while, and maybe throwing you know male heroes once in a while, uh, to my comics. But since we're gonna we're gonna not draw those kind of comics, we're gonna draw more you know acceptable comics or more appropriate comics. We'll, we'll talk about drawing the dudes, you know. And I know at right now every all you know everybody makes fun of the Marvel the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's the MCU, you know. And they every single character is female. That's true, um, and I find that to be problematic. It's like. It's literally like they listened to me. They didn't, by the way, but they and I, they didn't in the regard as I, they're, they have different reasons. But I would have said, you know, back in like the 90s, oh, I want to do a bunch of, I want to see a bunch of females, you know, attractive girls play these characters, actresses, and I want to see them portrayed in these specific costumes, which they didn't do. And uh, I'm going to hyper focus on all the female characters. And in the 90s, a lot of the characters were female. I mean, Lady Death, Purgatory, Witchblade, um, you know, T Tumor, you know, Laura, Laura Croft. I mean, so many characters in the 90s were female. And, uh, you know, and there was a, there's definitely a whole school of those. But to, they're doing it, obviously, for different reasons than my reasons, the way I'd want to do it. So you might look at it and go, well, it's like, oh no, he's drawing all females too. It's just like, no, 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 <laughs> for completely different reasons, uh, and not the reasons that the, they're making. You know, why the Force is female or why Marvel is the MCU. Uh, I think, in that regard, they're making a big mistake. But my my get out of jail free card with that is, I hate the MCU. I don't care about the MCU. I thought it was a cool idea when I was like in high school. You know, it's like, oh, I'd love to see. Uh, you know, it'd be a great. Uh, you know, Wolverine would be this guy from a movie, or hey, Patrick Stewart, you know, Captain Picard would be a great, you know, uh, Charles Xavier, which he ended up becoming, but um, it was more like a thing you'd sit around and you'd talk with your friends when you when you hung out with your buddies, you know, it was I, you didn't really think they were going to do it, and you really didn't really want them to do it, um, you just, that's just something you talked about, but obviously that that round the table discussion or that hanging out with your buddies discussion has become a thing and a billion dollar thing uh, and it's made a lot of money for a lot of people um, for a long period of time now so I I didn't you know when it first started I was like eh, it's kind of cool but then as I realized it was gonna be this big thing I was like I don't like it because everybody hyper focuses on the characters from the movie, they don't hyper focus on the comic book characters anymore. A lot of people don't even know that these comic books exist. 
a lot of these people don't even, it's like, oh, who's that character? Yeah, the character's been around for like 40 years. Oh, really? Yeah, in comic books. Oh, I don't read comic books. Well, there you go. For me, it's about the comic books. It's, I mean, I love the characters, you know, and the thing is, I find that the comic books, nine times out of ten, do not translate to the to the screen, to the big screen. Um, the, the, like I said, this specific costume, this specific, um, sorry, here was the uh, graphic novel version. Um, that specific version of uh, Marvel Girl isn't what they used in the movie. You know, but I like that specific version of Marvel Girl. I like that specific costume she's wearing. I like that specific color shade. Like it, down to the down to the exact to the four number or the three numbers, you know, the red, blue, and the yellow. There's a specific reason I like that character. I might like I might like this character just because I like the, his outfit and the color combination. It's an absurd, crazy, over the top costume. And does it translate to the screen? No, it looks stupid. It looks completely idiotic if you were to put that in a real person, you know. Um, but. I love it on a comic book page, and I love it, uh, you know, I mean, here's a good character. Like, you're, you're, that character is not going to look like that in a movie, you know, but it's going to look like that on a comic book page. That specific yellow, that specific red design on it, right? And the, simpli and the, simplici the simplicity of it, too, which, I mean, I find... You know, they, they overbake everything is what they call it. They try to make it so complicated. It's got to be so hyper-realistic. It's just like, no. I, I'm, a, I'm a good with, like, a certain degree of, of passability for realism. It's like, okay, that looks like a fold in a... That looks like a fold in a, in a pant leg tucked into a boot, right? That's about as realistically as I need to know, you know? Does this does this mach does he look like he exists in three dimensional space in relative, at least close proximity or, or relative, uh, correctness to the other character? Right. That's all I need to know. I don't need to know his his costume doesn't have to be super specific and super detailed and super realistic. You know the way they fly doesn't have to be realistic. Everything doesn't have to be crazy realistic. And then. To some degree, they don't even follow that in the movies anyways, because some of the action is so over the top and so drag, drug out for spectacle that it's just like, okay, in the comic book, that guy fought that guy for like three pages, which is a long time, by the way. But he fought that person for three pages over the course of like, you know, 20 panels. And, uh, and the fight was over, you know. It, it ended with the, you know, he punched him through a wall and he's out cold, right? All of his health points are gone, right? Um, and he's and he's on he's knocked out, right? But that same fight in the movie will go on for frickin' hour, and it'll be so over the top. I mean, I thought that the the fight scene between um, uh, the who are the the three bad guys? I can't remember what they're called. Uh, Neil before Zod, you know the the bad guys in Superman too. I thought that that fight went on way too long. It's like, oh come on, will this fight just wrap it up? You know, it's like the fight between Roddy Roddy Piper and the other guy in uh, They Live. It's just like, I don't want to see a 20-minute long fight scene. If I do, I'm going to watch wrestling to see a 20-minute long fight scene. And I don't like 20-minute long wrestling matches either. Um, you know, so... Yeah, I think that they, they make things hyper-realistic, but then they totally, like, throw that out the window when they want to just totally, like, overindulge in action or overindulge in some crazy sequence and stuff. It's just like, it's all over the place with, you know, and they, they can do, you can do the mental gymnastics and, and the mealy mouth uh, excuses for whatever you're doing all you want. But at the end of the day, it's just self-indulgency that's just over the top. And it's, you're, you're, you're arguing things that make no point at a certain point. It's like, oh, well, this person, a costume is totally unrealistic because he's an unrealistic character. Because those those people don't exist in real life. Oh, I know, but it, you know, at least you want it to be be based in reality. You do. I don't. I would rather, you know, is it, if you're gonna go to the grocery store, you know, and some girls gonna be wearing this kind. Well, maybe today, but maybe, um, 
you know, wearing Medusa, her outfit. You're going to go see a girl on the street wearing Medusa's outfit with her crazy hair? It's like, that's not realistic. But I would love to see that. I want to live in that world. Um, but so, yeah, so people, uh, the whole realism thing is just, it's moot when you're talking about comic book movies. Because uh, comic books aren't realistic, you know. Like I said, so, a, a, a small degree of believability, so I know. That something you know, and like I said, there's a lot of shorthand techniques for conveying that information. It's, it's real to make it look a little bit more real. Um, and Marvel Comics has always been the big, you know, age-long uh, argument between the two comic books. Is you know, DC's a little too out there, and uh, Marvel's grounded in reality. And I, you know, it, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's they've said it in multiple. You know interviews and documentaries and stuff and i understand where they're coming from with that and yes i believe that type of realism is is a good idea um you know i also think you know like i said with the whole cra I, i'm going to get into this craziness with the, with the mcu but let's 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 take let's leave the mcu let's talk about the comic books even in the comic books it's just like oh there's you know there's there's more gay gay you know lgbtq crowd is uh you know more prominent these days um so we want to see more representation i don't really have any problem with that you know but you got to realize certain it, it depends on what you're doing and it depends everything's got a specific situation if you're just doing it to, to because you have because you want to make a point i mean that's fine too you have the you have the you know right to do that but you know if that turns people off and you're not selling books or nobody's you know you know, if your whole point is to make money at it, you're not making money at it because you're not creating or writing the type of stories and characters that people want to pay money for, you, you kind of have to write the ship. I mean, I'm guilty of it. I, 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 I just went through about my last issue of my comic. I think I went a little too self-indulgent. I was steered off course and started making characters and stories that I don't think people wanted to see as much as uh, some of the more, you know, traditional stuff that I normally do so I'm I'm steering the ship you know I'm, I'm, I'm trying to I'm following the money you know I mean I love doing it all and you know I can be self-indulgent you know but I can also I can get I, sorry I can get gratification from being self-indulgent I can also be get gratification from doing stuff that other people want to see because I love doing it all you know and if it's especially if it's grounded in stuff that I absolutely love um, I'm at the end of the day. I've got a grin on my face from ear to ear doing it. So uh, that said, we'll kind of leave that at that. I, I, it'll probably come up a few more times. Oh my God! I tell you, me without this beard. Ugh. 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 <laughs> Feel like the uh, the guy in uh, the Princess Bride. You know the the uh, the guy that's uh, fixing up Wesley there. You know the the albino. <laughs> Feel like the albino. Anyways. Ugh. My jowls shake as I move my head. Anyways, um, yeah. So, like I said, these are great if you're doing Marvel comic books, if you're doing Marvel characters esque characters. If you want to do stuff at that time, uh, obviously, if you're making your own characters, you're going to want to make some kind of model sheets to have on hand that you can, you know, you can reference for costumes and stuff. I mean, these these technically these aren't model sheets, and these aren't the greatest. Uh, for reference, because I don't know what the back of her costume looks like, right? Is it just is it got an open back or is it got a full full back to her outfit there, right? Does she have a tail that's just not seen? You know, I mean, she doesn't, but I mean, you know, I don't know what the back of this character looks like, right? Because this is this isn't the best, but that's where your creativity and that's where your artistic ability has to come involved. You can either hunt down pictures in a panel in a comic book to see what the back of that characters look like. If you have an action figure of it, that's always great. Um, like I said, I think drawing from action figures is also a tool, just like the mannequins back in the day, and, and don't discount that. That's one of the reasons why I love action figures, is because, you know, comic books are figures. Comic books are characters doing things. And, you know, if you can, if you can get an action figure of a character that you want to do, you know, by the action figure, by the Marvel Legends, I got plenty of them out there for different 
characters. Uh, you know, I got my ro uh, my rogue floating around somewhere. Oh, yeah, here, I keep pulling them out here. Look at that. If you want to draw a war duke, you know, in a comic book, there's your war duke, right? You have a war duke, and you have a cell phone, right? Right now, you've totally bypassed. You, you've got more technology involved right here than I ever did as a kid, right? I never had. I mean, I had a War Duke figure, but the, it was not this detailed, obviously, right? I want to draw a War Duke. Okay, well, pose War Duke how you want to pose him in the comic book, right? What is he going to look like? I need. I, I don't want to sit there and just draw from this. It's hard to see. You don't have to, right? Pull up your camera. On your phone, right? Use it as a picture plane. Use it. Use it as. Use it like you're drawing a panel. Hey, I'm gonna draw War Duke looking over his shoulder, or looking over War Duke's shoulder at some guy as he's just about to, you know, step on him or, or uh, you know, stab him, or he's just stabbed him, right? <clears throat> and I want to see him from a, a, a bird's eye view, and I want to see him, you know, I want to know how sh short. Or how small his feet should be, right? I want to draw him so his head looks big. It's like if I had to freehand draw that, that'd be a pain in the ass. But guess what? Well, you might not want to do a cast on top of a comic book. Use like a white piece of paper or something, or you can even build yourself a little mini photo booth for these guys. Um, you know, hey, I want him in that exact pose, right? Boom. My, 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 I got a Samsung Galaxy. This doesn't make the best pictures. There you go. I've got him in that. Now I've got him in that, right? I can take this picture, cut him out. That's why you do him against a white background. It's really easy to separate him. And just drop him into a panel. Size him up, right? If you want his helmet to break the top of the panel to be more like he's coming out of the page, you can do that, right? You want to know, you know, your panels roughly on that side. Maybe you don't like them at that. Maybe it's you don't like them at that Dutch angle like that. Maybe you want them more straight up. Maybe you want them back a little farther. But you've got that image now of him looking over his shoulder, and you can see because it's a great you know it's a very detailed picture. I can see all of the detail. I can see how the light hits it. You can even get lighting and and light him up. You know what I mean? So you get dramatic lighting. Uh, you have everything you need to draw that figure right there in that specific panel right there and here's the quick here's 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 the here's the big secret this is this is the big uh, secret sauce you could trace it I'm gonna draw a war duke right why would I spend time trying to redraw this photograph by hand when I could just trace this right I want to draw him from the front I want him to look exactly like this figure right just trace him. I mean, this is a pretty detailed figure. This is a is pretty damn nice figure. It doesn't look like a toy. It's essentially it's a statue that's posable. Now he's not super posable, so don't expect to put him in some crazy poses. But you know, if you want him to to be War Duke, I mean, you put an actor in this costume and you try to get him to to be. You know, he's not going to be doing jumping around crazy kung fu, right? He's going to be cumbersome and lumbering around this, right? But that's what you want. You want you want hyper-realism, right? Well, there you go. Okay. Oh, my goodness. There's War Duke. Oh, he's a looking up. There's a big... Tiamat's up there. He's looking up at Tiamat like, I'm. oh, shit. I gotta fight Tiamat, right? Well, there you go. Look at that. That'd be a great... That'd be a great... Uh, a full... What do you call it? Splash page right there. Splash page of, of him... Looking up like this at the camera, right? And you've got your captions. He's saying, you know, like, Arr, Tiamat! You know, like, that, whatever. And uh, then you, you draw, like, a cast shadow around him of Tiamat. So you don't really know it's Tiamat that he's fighting, but he says Tiamat. And he's obviously reacting to it. And boom, there you go. Take pictures of all that. You got a Tiamat... They make a Tiamat uh, miniature that's pretty, pretty nice and detailed. You know, uh, you could do that. You know, if you need to, if you need Tiamat for that type of thing, you could do Tiamat versus uh, War Duke all day long. I mean, you don't know how <laughs> just to just to say those words, Tiamat versus War Duke. 
that's that's going deep with me. I mean, that's hitting all my buttons right there, right? But like I said, you could do that. And like I said, now you can't. Now obviously, if you trace the stuff, you've got to know what to do. You've got to know how to. You got to know how to block that shot out. You've got to know a lot of. Sorry. You got to know a lot of different things that take artistic ability to draw right and that stuff's only over time but you're only limited by your own creativity and your own problem solving because when it comes down to the end of the day these comic books sorry it's probably was i'm at an hour so i'm probably going to get into everything in this full video but you kind of know what i'm talking about is uh your um you're only uh limited by your creativity and your ability to problem solve you read the script. The script says, I want, you know, a reaction shot. The splash page, I want a reaction shot of War Duke. You te a silhouette of Tiamat, you know, cast upon War Duke as he's looking up and they're getting ready to fight, right? Okay. So, whatever you have to do, whatever handstand, crazy photograph, tracing, freehand drawing, you know, uh, shadow puppets whatever you have to do to, to make that comic book panel go at it um you know and hopefully you're in and like i said just refine that th refine that final line art to to represent exactly what that is and like i said i'm going to get into the details on how to do that but you know that's what you that's essentially what you want you what you want to do you know and rinse repeat from panel to panel to panel to page to page to page boom you've got a comic book You've got a comic book or just a comic in general strip. You know, let's say it's only three page strip, right? With six panels on a page. You're at 18 panels. Okay, to do those 18 panels, I need to come up with what's going to be in all 18 of those panels and follow a storyline. And, you know, I need to draw what's going to be in that. So that's all it is. I mean, it's, there's no smoke and mirrors. There's no, uh, those are the smoke and mirrors. There's no secret sauce. That's just essentially what you want to do is write a comic book strip, script or plot or at least something tell, telling what's in each panel on every page and uh, and just come up with the scenes you know play with your toys I'll show you some online toys we'll get into those too well, some online toys that essentially do the same thing but again like the pen and paper it's unlimited and I don't have to pay for it to a certain degree <laughs> um, you don't have to uh, you know you you know you you don't have to um what am i gonna say it, it all the stuff essentially draws itself and essentially creates itself you got to have the idea and you got to have a good idea and you got to you know got to make sure you got it and refine that idea and you and obviously you want to have good finished polished drafted artwork at in the final draft however the point between those two spaces, there's a lot of things you can do. I'm just going to show you specifically what I do. Um, you know, I don't, I do, I, I have in the past, but I don't really use the, the figures that so much anymore because I found an online alt or you know a digital alternative that's like I said has a lot more advantages and is unlimited as opposed to you know buying. Obviously, you buy tons of action figures. You can spend a lot of money. You know, and uh, I've got something better than using my cell phone or even even a nice camera, like a digital SLR. It's a great camera, but I've got something that actually works even better than that, and I'll show you how it works. Um, you know, and you couple that with all your reference material, whatever you're doing. You know, whether it's maybe it's DC Comics, maybe it's Image Comics, um, maybe it's your original characters. Like I said, fan art and fan fiction is primarily what I do. Um, and it's very lucrative. There's lots of gray area, of course, with copyright and all that type of stuff. And I'll, I'll address all of that as well. But um, it's lucrative. It's kept me with a roof over my head and food on my table for the last full time for the last four years. And before that, part time, another six years previous to that, seven years previous to that. So I've been doing it now for about 11 years. Uh, professionally and uh, and, and full-time in the last four years and 
I do it. I, 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 not, I don't just do Marvel stuff. I mean, I do everything as people, my fans and people who read my stuff and my followers and stuff. No, I'll do it all. You know, I'm not a huge anime per you've You've known this because I've made videos on this. I'm not a huge anime person. Uh, there's certain things that, you know, I'm not against doing anything really. It just depends on if I want to do it or not. Um, that really what comes down to it. You know, people, you know, I have clients and stuff saying, hey, what won't you do? Well, that's a pretty big question. My question is, how about you tell me what you want me to do and I'll give you an answer, yes or no. That's pretty much as simple as possible. So, like I said, those people, people are watching, or potential clients in the future, that's exactly how I work. You know, don't hit me with a, don't hit me with asking me a really, really broad question. Tell me, if there's, if it's question in general, meaning that you're, you're worried that I'm going to say yes or no, right? The easiest way to tell me, and like I said, don't feel stupid. Tell me your idea. I'm not going to share your idea with anybody. It's, it stays strictly confidential. And, you know, I'm not going to poo-poo. I'm not going to laugh at anybody's idea, right? Uh, I'm going to, you know, if you say, hey, you want me to draw this, right? And I've got to think about, it. do I really want to do that? Or can I do that? Or am I, do I think it's going to, I think it's a good fit, right? It's probably the best way to describe it. Is, is what I do and the way I do it, is it a good fit for that specific idea you have? And sometimes it isn't. You know, and I'm pretty upfront with people and tell you know I'm really not. It's not that, it, like I said, when you say you're not comfortable doing it, it's not because then it leads to this thing that's like, oh, what's he comfortable with and not comfortable with? It's just like I'll try to give you a reason, right? Hey, maybe I just don't like that character and I don't really feel like drawing it for 18 panels, right? So, you know, or maybe it's just like, you know, maybe I that specific situation that they're in that specific comic book <clears throat> I don't know just don't feel like drawing that you know that's pretty much uh, you know I'll, I'll try to be up front with people and I, and I anybody who else is you know watching these videos trying to learn this to do themselves I would take that same attitude towards it is you know treat it treat everybody's specific everybody's idea that they approach you with every you know inquiry as a potential job and then, just like any other job, sit back and give it a few minutes thought. Do you really want to do that? You know, if you do, green light. Go ahead, do it. If you, you're like, eh, you're hemming and hawing on it, maybe you need to take some time. Maybe, hey, maybe let me think about it if I'm going to do that, right? Most clients are pretty, you know, they, they want they want to see their stuff actualized. So, you know, and maybe if there's some stigma to it or there's some... You know, so I'll say the stuff that I do, if there's some some kind of like, uh, you know, I guess stigma is the best word to describe it. Some hang up that they may have uh, to get it done, right? Uh, you know, be respectful of that and, uh, you know, and give somebody a respectful answer if you choose to, de if you choose to deny, you know, say no. You know, and... and, and Try not to get in a situation I've been in myself where you agree to everything because you need the money. Um, if if that's the case, then you're just gonna have to work through that. You know, if you need the money and you, there's people are hitting you with a bunch of stuff that you don't want to do, that's called work. That's what that's you know. I hey, I don't want to go to work today because they're gonna want me to do work, right? Uh, that's the whole point, right? Is they want you, they want somebody, they don't want to do it themselves. Or they can't do it themselves. They want you to do it. And if maybe that means drawing anime characters and you don't draw anime. Or maybe they want you to draw, you know, 70s Marvel characters. And like, I don't like 70s Marvel characters, right? At the end of the day, if you're starving and you need the money, I would consider doing it. You know? Like I said, my, my biggest beef with things are there's certain things and, and I'm not really going to get into this because like I said this moves more into the inappropriate stuff um, there's certain things that I just do not want to do um, and if you if you if you you know I, I try to put that out as a as like a blanket statement for people I used to put it in like you know write up sheets you know guideline sheets and stuff like that I just found it it seems like I'm being I get uh, reactionary to it uh, it's like every time I find something that kind of like I 
you didn't want to do. It's like suddenly I'm rewriting my guidelines. It's just like it's a it's a no win situation. So best thing to do is just listen to somebody's idea. They get a job for you. They're going to pay you X amount of money. You know, maybe you'll do it, but you'll do it for more money than you would do it for something more that you would. Let's say, you know, hey, I want you to draw a Marvel girl. Great. Right. I'll be happy to do it. So I'm going to charge somebody my standard rate. Somebody says, hey, can you draw a I'm not that I don't like man thing. Let's say I hated man thing. I want you to draw a man thing. And uh, this guy, right? And then be like, hmm, okay. I probably would do it for my standard rate. But I'm just saying, let's say I just didn't want to draw the character. And you, they were doing something that you didn't want to draw them doing. You know, let's say you didn't want to draw man thing and this guy to be sitting in a coffee shop for three panels talking about, you know, their uh, their 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 slice of life uh, story, right? Maybe you don't want to do that, right? But you need the money. Here's the thing. It's not it's not unheard of to say, hey, I'll do it for a little bit more money than I normally charge, right? I don't really want to do this, but I'm willing to do it if it's if I'm well compensated for it, and I feel that, hey, maybe I need an extra hundred dollars a page, right? The person. All they can they can say yes or no. Just like when you say yes or no, to, it, it, this is a it's a it's a back and forth here. Hey, will you draw this? Yes or no. Hey, I'm going to charge this amount of money. Yes or no. You don't know until you ask. So I'm going to leave it at that. I, sorry, I covered a lot of things, but that's pretty much an overview of it. I'm going to get into drawing pages, scripting, paneling, line art, how to block shots out. You know, inspiration, where, to, what to draw, how to put the, how to literally letter the page, how to put the comic books together. I'm going to go through all of that in a series of videos. This is just kind of my overview of that. Again, I've already gone over an hour. So I want to kind of make them an hour long chapters. Um, so the first thing I think I'm going to do in the next video is we're going to talk about the script. Because that's, well, the plot, the script, the, the very first thing you want to look at when you're creating a comic. Um, and, uh, and we'll go over that in the next video. Okay, so if you like this, like and subscribe. Um, if you know somebody who wants this information or it's valuable to somebody else, <laughs> sorry, let them know. It. Sorry, I'm hiccuping, yawning, falling apart here in an hour, talking to myself. Um, so all of that stuff, we'll, uh, we'll address it and, uh, and put some, you know, like I said, you guys want to, if there's certain things you want to know about in, give me messages and stuff, and I'll try to cover that stuff in the uh, in the videos on this. But I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to do a specific docu-series or whatever, or tutorial series here, um, and to the best of my ability. Because like I said, I'm not, I'm also a terrible teacher. Let me just put that out there. I'm a very terrible teacher when it comes to explaining things. So keep that in mind as well. So... If you need clarification, send me a message and I'll try to clarify it on. I'll try to clarify it in the video. Um, but, uh, yeah, hit me up with stuff and we'll see how this goes. As I said, I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. Just always been hesitant. So I'm going to give it a, just like me starting a YouTube channel. I want to do it for a long time, was hesitant. So I'm going to dip my feet in this and see what happens and see uh, if it's, if it's, you know, if it lands with people. All right, I'll let you guys go and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.